So if uh, if there are some questions about what we told until now, uh, I'm very sorry for my English, but I told it just before. I hope to not be boring. <laughs> so if uh, you have something you want to deepen in or to um, some other questions, we are where. I just remembered the uh, what you showed before when they had the people around the table. Did you select them personally, like the um, participants? Yeah, we select them, um, um, trying to uh, how do you say, um, trying to cover more or less the heterogeneity of uh, of, uh, of a city. So, mm. for example, one was very right on the right side, so politi politically seen. One was an um, um, owner of a, of a um, shop, mm -hmm. so he was very interesting on the economical part of, a s of, a, of the dealing with a city. Mm -hmm. Then was there was uh, one of the university and one, uh, uh, a woman which was very um, um, um working on uh, in, a, in an association of migrants, for example, and from their rights and so on. So there was a lot of uh, different point of views. Of mm. course, not all yeah. could be redone a lot of times. Um, and yeah, and it was very interesting to have this uh, different uh, point of view uh, crashing together in this uh, mm. sort of um, meeting. And um, what was interesting, as I, s I said before, it is the fact that uh, um, if, if the topic was governance, the governance was something that also the openness um, recognized as, uh, uh, as, as an important part of uh, um, to, uh, to, um, yeah, to, to organize a city. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, cool. Slide past that one. Um, now we go a bit quicker. Um, because we would really, uh, we, we would like to make uh, afterwards we would to 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 open more the the um, the, the speech and the the, the, the discussion, um, um, also because we have a we, we try to make a sort of uh, s uh, schema schema sch scheme um, to analyze some projects. Maybe it could be interesting also if you have some projects. Um, Running or, uh, or 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 making s could be also interesting <laughs> how this schema schema uh, is uh, dealing with uh, your project. So Ati Democratici is a project we uh, started in 2009. I have uh, some uh, uh, the postcards of this project. This is uh, um, this is just for C because uh, because it's the l the last one I have. So <laughs> please give it back. <laughs> but. Um, it started uh, a year uh, before with the biennial of um, of um, of um, democracy in Turin, and, um, and there was a the, the the project is called Democratic Act, so Arti Democratici, and the aim was to uh, um, understand democracy in uh, <coughs> trying to um, uh, see it of mm, mm, through different point of views. We uh, participate to the first uh, ish, uh, edition of this uh, um, Democrat Atti Democratici and then uh, um, um, making a newspaper and uh, we are not very happy with the first edition but I give it to you. This is the first and this is the second edition. Uh, this is um, a magazine about uh, the... Uh, come si chiamano? Principi fondamentali della Costituzione italiana. That's it. <laughs> and uh, so we um, uh, we wanted to analyze the constitution, co constitution, um, mm, trying to understand how the principles of this constitution are, are linked to the daily life and how are they are the perceived and how they we deal with it. And um, the first edition was uh, very uh, a bit um, poor, I think, because it was uh, just really um, s small um, contributions. But in the second, it, it was very interesting because it became uh, more related to the context of, of, of uh, also. <coughs> but uh, also the the um, the relation between the content of the principles 
and uh, the, the, the way it was analyzed were, were more interesting. Anyway, we, um, we brought Atti Democratici to Longomare, uh, to Bolzano, sorry, not to Longomare, and um, also this is that's interesting because the, the, the location of this, uh, of, the, of this project was not the place of Lungomare. Before, someone asked about the necessity of, uh, of having a place, having a space. Uh, maybe we can come later on it, but it's uh, an interesting issue. We are also wondering if we need a space or we do not. Uh, anyway, we, uh, we, we, try we um, um, brought this project uh, um, in an in a industrial area and in a place where um, we had more space to do this project. And so it was not located in Nungomare. Also because w it's more near to the city and uh, because we thought it's uh, more visible there. And uh, we, need we, we needed to have a very ne visible place. So we made this. Ah, so these are the people where I uh, was in, uh, involved. That's a big list. But we see that now we have some, some um, examples. So this is the, the place. We... Um we needed to clean it up completely and to <laughs> put a lot of work in it. And um, yeah, um, we, uh, we uh, bought some uh, different kind of, uh, uh, we, we, we um, involved different kind of um, curators. Uh, so there was one uh, um, creating a, um, a screening of videos about democracy, uh, one uh, um, creating a um, more um, performative, <coughs> Um, yeah, performative um, program. Pro program, yeah. And then there was Ol Volare Ovo with, the next with a new edition. And then, now I forget something, but it will... Conf no, conference as well, or no? And the conferences, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so speeches and dialogues. So this is Yael David. She uh, brought this, uh, this uh, performance. You see it here. Um, where uh, it's a screen with the lips just out. So you came into this place and you just see these lips completely frozen in a way. And um, so you enter to the place just uh, uh, having this sensation of uh, hidden words in a way. And uh, this was uh, her contribution. And he she made a performance, which is a bit long to explain, but <laughs> okay. And um, then also, yeah, this is also a part of the... Um um project we made a we invited for the um, designer to make uh, um, um, posters for the public space so brave new alps the, le the on the left down um wanted to put in the public space um just white posters to clean it up from uh, from um, um published uh, from publicity, publicity yeah. advertisement um lauren Ag alexander broke this uh, poster on the top left, which is one uh, um, very communist sign. And uh, down you have the Rolex on the same hand. So and, and she's from uh, South Africa. And uh, there is a lot this uh, strange reality between <coughs> uh, rich and poor and between um, s new status symbols. And uh, on the right side down, you see um, a poster which a with, with a lot of uh, a collection of posters which belongs to the um, are related to democracy, and uh, up to there you see uh, uh, the text of um, of um, of um, the what you have to fill in when you go to the US. Uh, the, the the question the question are you you have to fill in. Ah, here. I don't know if I will explain this uh, properly, but let's say that I have a problem with given structures, whatever sort of given structure it is. So when you already have an infrastructure in which you have to move, and one of these is democracy for me, because it corresponds to a set of values that someone decided that is democratic, but they are not really democratic at all. I mean, it's an eternal argument by lots of thinkers and practitioners. I'm not saying anything new. I just would like to say what, what was your position when you started to think about acts of democracy or democratic acts? Our um, aim was to create acts 
for democratic positions or for, for democratic thinking. So it was uh, to um, to see this uh, the, um, the the relation you have with democracy in this case the the, the participant of the project and to give a statement to uh, to this uh, theme. Of course, it's very complicated and uh, also this uh, it it it, uh, it came out from this biennial in Turin. Also there, the, there is a lot of um, um, philosophical, um, how you say, um, uh, background you have to consider. Um, we were not considering this mm, this uh, whole mm, philosophical background because we have we don't have the skills to do it. But we wanted to have some uh, positions from uh, um, people coming from mm, yeah from the creative. Um, from um, ah, come si dice? dei punti di vista delle da, da, persone che fanno dei progetti per esempio Shilpa Gupta she made this uh, series of uh, photographies and um, they were made in Bolzano and uh, this is the work is uh, don't speak, don't hear don't so it's a sort of negation it's a it's a, um, a performance of negation expression. So this is a critique to how sh he uh, she see democracy, for example. And we made these pictures, and uh, we uh, made very big um, mm, posters, so two meters high, and uh, without any logo, nothing. We put them into the public space, and we want to um, have this sort of. Um, um not um, revealable reaction of 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 the of the citizen so you are confronted with this image and you can uh, think about it and uh, but you don't have a we, we we were not able to capture all the reaction uh, of of about of these images so it was very interesting to have this um, very um, personal moment in the public space with these images so this was the space, and here we have uh, Aya Rakawa and Nikolas Gambarov. They made a performance about a new um, vocabulary, no, a new alphabet. They um, they were inspired fr from this um, idea of having two languages, and they wanted to make ones. So uh, language as expression is also uh, language of ex uh, is, is, a, is a way to express yourself, and see so it's also a way to take your voice uh, and to make you comprehensible and um, so the, the idea was to create a new alphabet which was the uh, overlapping of more um, of more um, uh, um, letters and creating a new alphabet and he was just trying to read it during the performance he made it there with the people who who came then there was a uh, Cesare Pietro Giusti, which made he, he made a, um, a workshop, which is also in the Volare O, about uh, um, about come si dice la about uh, I say I don't know, that comes now quando uh, non Anyway, for my time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I it, it doesn't came, but it's when you when you uh, don't uh, are, are have <coughs> the courage to say something, yeah. you are in a way, um, or you are not allowed to say your your opinion. <laughs> no, censura, dear me, censorship. Sorry. <laughs> 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 censorship in the um, in the in, in art field and so we made this uh, long discussion with a group of people and we try to deepen in this uh, this uh, this co this uh, this topic and the position were quite different um, also uh, what is the f uh, what can make what uh, make uh, censorship possible um, how you are um, um influenced by the others and how this influence become censorship and so on. 
this volare o you have maybe have you seen it c'è una I was wondering were you like proposing forms of democracy or what was I wonder how you related to like the local context or was it you as a curator also who was pro who were like pro proposing some forms of democracy or No we I don't propose a form of democracy of course but uh, uh, we um wanted to bring the question of democracy in a context which is very uh, which where, where democracy official We took the artistic part more. So this is a project uh, which is very interesting because um, it failed. So Tanya Bruguera came to to, uh, to to our place and she wanted to make a project, which uh, mm, a long-term project. She, she told, and um, she wanted to convince different. Um, um impreneur uh, of uh, Bolzano to make a um um a campaign a big campaign uh, in the in the in the, in the public space advertising campaign um without logo without uh, without uh, any um uh, advertising uh, content but with uh, um uh, contents that belong to the to the uh, yeah to the to the um, to the to the context, so um, mm, analysis of the society, uh, how um, so how can we say ethical ethical messages for the uh, the public space? So we made this uh, big discussion there, and she presented the pr the project, and she showed the slides, and she wanted to uh, occupy all the places. Um, uh, for uh, for advertisement with this sort of uh, ethical messages. How did she choose the um, the messages? No, no, no. This was just uh, initiating a project, a process. Of course, she do not know anything about the the content, and uh, she was just presenting this project, also showing this. Uh, um, yeah, tr tr trying to make some collage, blah blah. And uh, and then we began to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, the first uh, two times she was present there, and then uh, we, uh, we 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 continued this discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem was to define what kind of messages. The problem was to define who pays for it, mm -hmm. because so she ideally the messages uh, should have been the result of uh, these conversations. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs, no. I mean, the content should have been. No, no. We, 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 um, the uh, we were. Um, the there was the need to find a si uh, system, or, uh, for example, to work together with uh, with um, scrittori, writers, and uh, other institutions locally, and uh, trying to make, um, trying to 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 define messages for the public space, and. Um, 
she was uh, she she started with this project because we we presented her uh, Bolzano as um, or the, the Alto Adige as a place which uh, uh, often um, um, si vanta di si, um, si vanta di essere una, una, un, un modello it's proud of being a model for uh, living together it's proud of being love a mo an economic model also and so she w she wanted to uh, try to be also an ethical model and uh, so she wa she came with this project so we um we we continued this, the, the discussion a lot of times we, we met a lot of time this also these entrepreneurs um and then uh, um we, we th there arrived a lot of problems because also the, the idea to, to not put the logo on it was a uh, was a topic to, to discuss with because it's uh, linked to um to economy to to to, to money and so um with all this trouble we, we we tried to write her but she was too busy and she were not able to 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 give us an answer and so she was not able to come back and so um the project failed because uh, we we tried to uh, to support the artist but the artist uh, just uh, threw a, a stone and then he, he went away so this is also i think a, a kind of um um way to work on a project which is which can be also dangerous because you you um also here you 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 deal with the expectation of this this entrepreneurs then you deal with the expectation of doing something new and something and then you 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 disappear so it's also um it's really critical because you don't uh, give an uh, um continuity to the project so yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's also maybe with the pitfalls that, like, then small and precarious institutions. Um, I mean, what can be the output of not having the infrastructure and also money to kind of fly in an artist five times and so forth? No, I mean, I guess um, establishing an, uh, a sustainable long-term project is also a question of, of of can also be, among others, a question of funding. Even if in order to create it, create just the, the the structure, I mean, because you have to, as an artist, you have to uh, be also able to afford to engage, I guess, in a such a in a longer conversation. Even if in this case it was uh, yeah, maybe I mean they said it's not more comp yeah because we, we um, the problem was not with we didn't have the feedback, so um, not just of the flights because we N yeah I mean I'm taking the flight as a symbol but I'm saying like I mean it's if you say like an artist we can pay you 5,000 euros fee for this thing and then we go on for the next five years and it's another thing as, as you're saying like mm -hmm. no you don't think you don't no because no <laughs> I, I also agree with this but um, I think in, in this case it was not because she was no, she was she, she started I think it's not so interesting okay. to kind of go into mm -hmm. in this specific case what mm -hmm. happened but I think what can be I mean what sometimes is difficult thinking about institutional practices is you imagine these amazing projects and you want to establish this long-term projects but then you have the funding secured for the first year and then as I mean as we are looking at Lungomari history then things die because there was no funding anymore so you start you kick off processes so it's very I mean I guess most of us are interested here in on kind of establishing a longer long-term relationship with places and people but then it comes back to the funding structures and so forth being different and, uh, and, and then it, it being very difficult to actually then put this into practice I think I don't know if there's a disagreement on this yeah I actually think that we were speaking about this over lunch, that the way in which the, the funds are structured above all in this country and the way in which the criteria are already elaborated in order for organization to follow and to do something and to create project is non-sustainable for a long-term project that can possibly, I don't know, have a development of three years and allow an artist to come and go back and stay for a while. I know we are not speaking yeah, specifically yeah. about this, but just generalizing a bit, we were thinking about a network that appeared, when was it, like 10 years ago? Ada? Sí. No, uh, say Anifa. Say Anifa? Okay, so around six years ago, lots of non for profit from all over Italy gathered together, thinking that it was a good chance to try to create a sort of like common rights um, 
Italian Council, uh, yeah, council like for, uh, for, for an art council for Italy. And, and also to, to resonate upon like the structure of the institution itself and how you work with a non-for-profit. And then all of a sudden, this network just disappeared and the majority of the non-for-profit that were part of this uh, were, I mean, either they don't exist anymore nowadays or if they are, if they are still alive, they are doing very few events or very few workshops and talks and things like that because it's very difficult. So the conditions that are in place are somehow not allowed in us to really uh, program for five years long-term project. So it's a struggle and is uh, somehow controversial because if you really want to create something for the territory, it's very difficult to think in one year only and then think that maybe you disappear because then you, okay, you are just putting a seed but you are not taking care of the harvest. So I don't understand what's the point. But nevertheless, we cannot give up because if we just stop working, then there is no reason whatsoever for arts in this country. So, <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to support. I mean it's, it's the same kind of, of, of funding way in which you apply per year. So it's really difficult to do a two-year project because you never get the funding for the two years. So you, you always take the risk of starting it, doing one year, and then having to apply for funds again. And that, uh, yeah, probably it will come up in other discussions here because I'm thinking of Maria, who's coming from Consoni, and they, they also have this problem of being having to apply every year. And then I don't know how it is in Italy or in other countries, but another thing that happens in Spain is that often you apply in March for the projects for that year, and then you get the money in September, and you have to justify and spend all your money in December. So you have to be... Either you take the risk, put the money, s you don't know from where, take it out and then risk it and then if you get it, get it back. Or you do everything between September and December like crazy because then you have to justify that you've done all these projects. So it's, I think funding is really, really problematic in a lot of countries that don't have an art council because generally it, art councils try to, uh, I don't know, homogenize that a bit better. But if you don't have an art council, I think it's always like mm. running for the money every month which is a problem. And then also, going back to what Fabio was saying in the morning about how do you pay the artist, I mean, sometimes it's, it's so difficult to be because the majority of budget are not including human sources. So if you have, like, an amount of money for travels or per diem, whatever, but you actually cannot pay the artist for the work, and you don't have a fee. So it's also very controversial how you can position yourself as a curator delivering a program as this one, but knowing, acknowledging that the person is working for you is not going to be paid. So I, I'm, I'm sure that these are things that we are sharing a lot of different countries in, in Europe, and it's becoming worse and worse, <laughs> unfortunately. But I also think that the, the way of... Ah, oh sorry. Just to put the issue upside down, I guess that um, in Italy specifically, but I think now is uh, all over Europe, um, the fact is that uh, I remember when we made the research with fucking Goudart, uh, uh, Italy in the age of Berlusconi, and what was coming up was that independent spaces were supplying the, f uh, the lack of public uh, activities. So actually we got this mission, I, I guess, to propose long-term interventions, even if they don't uh, happen as we wish. But still it's uh, is kind of an uh, important thing that uh, we are attempting to do. So, I mean, if there was not the problem, maybe there were less at there was less at attention to this kind of spaces, let's say. So maybe we have to be optimistic somehow about it <laughs> and <laughs> try to make our bread. Yeah, I mean, maybe we're shifting too much, but I think um, then there's still a big problem with the precarity of, I mean, because these kind of spaces also actually try to discuss and raise questions around precarity and so forth, and, and it's very paradox to actually, I mean, fully exercise precarity, but then gather in very important meetings with very interesting people discussing these topics. But 
there is no moment of activation <laughs> because there is a lack of um, yeah the material possibilities actually to to face these questions. So it's very difficult actually to. I mean, I think that's something we discussed also a lot. Is like the con the minimum conditions you want to offer people coming, no, um, to work. I mean, to per to collaborate and. Uh, um and to reduce program in favor of treating people, um, I don't say good, but like decently, um, uh, and that's always yeah, that's always uh, it's 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 difficult. I mean, and I agree that there shouldn't be just mainstream, super well funded organizations, and that it's always this is the place where these kind of discussions have to take place. But then I think there is a line. I mean, I think in in Italy it's very low. <laughs> Uh, where, I mean, what is tolerable and what is not. I mean, the same thing we're doing here now is quite paradox. <laughs> no? If you want to raise this issue no, of having, again, money to fly in people and, and pay fees, but don't have money for those people who actually conceptualize such a course is, is ridiculous, no? Because there's always the money for the administration, but not for the actual content. But maybe we're going too much <laughs> off track, or maybe this is something we want to, yeah. Because I don't know if this is interesting for everybody. <laughs> I'm just curious, since, uh, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, you were uh, mostly work locally, right? Uh, in Bolzano, right? your activities and your program for kind of 10 years. Yeah. Uh, have you seen uh, something like uh, an avalanche effect or something that changed, that was inspired by your work? Uh, could you see something in the social, um, uh, in the society that has changed or other people were inspired by you? Something that is evident or visible? I think the, 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 the um, the program of cultural and the no the proposed the proposal the proposal of, of cultural program is very uh, grew qu quite a lot and there are many people that try to uh, open uh, spaces or residency or so there there was a big change in this um, in this um, in this direction I think. Um, I don't know if it depends of our work of or, or of others, but um, in these ten years, the the city and also the region completely changed. It was because of maybe because of uh, pieces also of ours, but there was also manifesta, the, the museum history, and then uh, other events that really made a big change. Now you can choose between different um, different uh, events per, per night. Mm, what before was impossible, you was just waiting for the next event. Event, so it uh, grew quite a lot, of and the cultural scene and the production grew quite a lot. This is for sure. I guess it's always it's very difficult to trace this back now and put it back to say like, oh yeah, that's Lungomare. That's why <laughs> now there is. Uh, three more spaces opening up. I think it's always a combination, the university, I mean, uh, like a whole thing. But I guess, I mean, there's two things. One is the, the cultural scene, I think that is much more vivid. And what is interesting also, I think that in the last year, a lot of things also are happening now much more like <laughs> at the margins of the margins in the valleys, um, outside of, of, of Bolzano, which is also interesting. But then of course, I mean, the question remains maybe also like the, um, um the topics you actually touch in your projects like how much do they uh, what impact is the what you have out of this i mean the the output of of projects on on a on a level of society like outside of the cultural field and that's yeah that's even more difficult i guess to um um um, um to tackle and i think it's very it's very small things which you it's it's easy it's very difficult to grasp and to kind of them but something what, what was also changing is that but also there it's not just because of of lungomare that uh, more and more um, events are bilingual which before was not possible 
So also this is a big change, I think, for a city which two languages live together. No? So this was also something that in these 10 years mm, this place reached. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely because because it's an issue that is discussed and discussed and chewed and chewed and chewed, not the whole identity question, minority question. Um, I have a related question to this, um, but I kind of want to frame it under a different term because the, the conversation really started around the notion of failure um, and the kind of the reasons why you know, failures might happen in this structure. But I'm actually curious about your notion of success and how do you measure how successful, you know, uh, an initiative is and what are those, you know, I mean, do you, how do you quantify that? And obviously, you know, there's no commercial element to it. I don't know if you're considering numbers of participants or if there's any qu quantitative as well as qualitative measures, but it relates a little bit to your comment because you know, you're, we're sort of talking about impact and change and languages, and I'm just curious if you could maybe frame it more under the notion of success. I think it's a very important thing to make this uh, thinking back of what you did and to measure it in a way. But I also th think, and this is what I, I feel for the for Lungomare, for example, is that we don't have the uh, we don't have the time, and we don't have the um, we don't have really the um condition to make this uh in a proper way for example to ma uh, you're talking to about evaluation no you're to, to make a proper evaluation we can perceive something as we told now for this question um but it's really impossible to uh, also to make this uh, this further step to really make it in a consequence and proper way um, it's really the condition of um, of uh, non-profit spaces in uh, here in Italy. I don't know, maybe also in some uh, abroad. Um, it's really precarious, and so you have really to try to survive first, and then you are always uh, running back to survive. So it's <laughs> I don't know if you. But, but th I don't know. I mean, I think it's a very interesting question—the question of success in 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 especially for for something like culture, no? Because it's something very subjective. Um, um, and I think that sometimes failure is also a success. I mean, <laughs> I mean, or like failure can be very productive um, to, um, and generative maybe even. I mean, not in this case, <laughs> but, in, uh, but in other cases, yes. I mean, I think, um, and this is a luxury which is will not maybe not go on so long. F f audience figures are not an issue at the moment, which is uh, I've worked in other contexts where they have been, and that kind of creates a whole other logics of programming and and um, yeah, and 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 ways of addressing and having to attract people uh, and public. Um, and I think Lungomar is still in a position of not having to kind of um, present um, um, this as an argument. I think this is also changing. I mean, I worked before in the Netherlands and there this got much stronger and stronger, this kind of qu uh, quantitative um, 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 elements to measure success. Um, I think what, yeah, w what is a success is if, if maybe things that have been initiated go on and there is no need of the institution any longer. Exactly. That's maybe also a success. The fact that you kind of survived for it, and I mean, survived is like a negative term, but like that you're still, yeah, that you're still there, and that maybe even like now at the ten years anniversary, politicians are coming there and, and are proudly holding their speech because I think it's also kind of good for them to show their face in this context before elections because it's kind of radical chic what they're doing if they um, go into the, the alternative scene as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's, a, like, there's some projects which are v very obvious success, like the Orto, Orto Urbano, which has been and like a project that has been initiated by uh, a guest curator of of, of Lungomare that ended now in an in a urban garden, which is there 
and um, it's going on and it's something completely autonomous now and works. I mean, th this is something very material in this one, w one example. Um, but then also that the fact that uh, many, there was many people that were contacting us to have information about how we, how we deal with the projects, how we do, um, yeah, ab to know how, um, how Lungomare works because uh, mm, there was many um, students that made some uh, um, some uh, um, final work about uh, non-profit spaces and where so we are where case studies, yeah. um, lots of times con contact from them to, to have information. So I think this is a bit uh, a measurement. Uh, I think that the issue of a longevity of a, of a project space is not something really uh, important, especially because I think it reflects a specific moment and in a kind of a generalized cri crisis, if you think of many project spaces, they are growing this time. And also if you think about how institutions are opening, about inviting uh, project space in art fair. For example, we had an example of Artissima Lido. And after that, I don't know, there are so many students also from U of, from uh, University Cadi Foscari. They are, in my case, I don't know if they contact you, uh, they are doing a lot of thesis on project space. So I think it's more important in this phenomenon that uh, how uh, and also if a project space should uh, uh, exist forever. Maybe it's also interesting that the project space just die after, uh, just reflect a specific moment. And, uh, uh, and the fact that there are no money, um, before you were talking about uh, that maybe you can support artists, and I think uh, usually this collaboration happened thankful to our trust and uh, uh, how do you say, how to you respect each other's work. So a lot of time also artists, they make an effort, they pay ticket themselves. And all of these um, things is quite interesting because it's more the need though, to start a discussion rather than uh, to act as an institution, especially also now that also institution, they struggle with the money. And uh, like we have a lot of example in Italy, you know, like uh, failure, Madre Museum and Maxi, et cetera. So I partially agree with you that longevity is not like shouldn't be the argument just um, to to survive. And I think, for example, Lungomar is an, I mean, Lungomar is an example for being an institution that is resisting to define itself as an institution, also because it doesn't have this infrastructure, that being so small and so precarious has the possibility to redefine itself constantly. And in this sense, it's last, I mean, it's lasting since 10 years, but it has shaped and changed itself continuously. No, in uh, in 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 has been in a constant mode of of adapting itself to to the interests by the people who run the space, by 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 the things that were perceived um, as being in need in in the specific context. So I still think that um, that the experience you carry on helps you to shape projects. And I see it, I mean, and that kind of gives you the possibility also to um, to develop a practice that maybe is um, going deeper into, into questions. And I think this popping up and disappearing can also be very dangerous. And I agree with you that I mean, when Daniela was talking about radical hospitality, I mean, Lungomare is based on the, on relationships. It's based on, on the engagement of people. It's based on the willingness to participate and the curiosity of, of coming there. And I mean, I think there's hardly been ever somebody turning down a project because there was not enough budget there. And there was always a way of finding this. But then maybe with the years gonna go on, you're kind of fed up with still cleaning the toilet after each opening and whatever, no, on and on and on. I mean, this is also a process of institutionalization, which you say like, okay, maybe we move on to the next level. <laughs> I don't know if it, may, it makes sense what I said. I forgot, I'm getting old, uh, but uh, often uh, there are those questions to artists run space and about how you change your territory. Do you think your work is changing your territory? I think also this is a kind of another difficult question because nowadays everyone travel and uh, we work on this exchange and we are constantly everywhere. Uh, when um, they ask me this question, I feel quite difficult to answer because we work more uh, in a 
globalized situation. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, like, you know, now you work more constantly on this exchange, a lot of projects because they don't have a physical base. So also when they ask about how you change your territory, I think maybe you just had a small uh, tassel, tassel, uh, a small piece of a puzzle to it, you know? <laughs> so I don't know, it was another thing I was thinking about. And I think... Mm. Sorry, no, no, go on. I think it's uh, it's 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 true in a way, but if you um, I think also a bit of schizophrenic the the fact that uh, you 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 open a space, you close it, and and uh, even if you uh, if if we travel a lot, maybe the topic the context in which you work does not travel as we do, maybe, and uh, I think uh, we should also think not just in the in the art field, mm-hmm. but also to the public you really talk to and you really um, ask to participate in your project, which is not s- not said that it is traveling as you are traveling or as another traveling. So if you work on the margins, uh, you have really to consider also this uh, relation to the context in a completely different way. The context may become a very important part of your practices because otherwise you, 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 you do it for, for your own. So you do you, you don't you don't talk to to the audience which is living there. Mm. At the beginning, you said that um, uh, the logic of uh, you you were talking about the logic of the event that uh, like after a few years of activity, you decided that you wanted somehow to abandon this idea of the of the event uh, and to transform it into engagement, uh, which is something uh, very interesting for me, and I think it's very relevant for uh, for Vessel. We are somehow in a similar uh, state of mind, let's say. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering uh, what brought you to this um, decision, if it was a decision, uh, if there were some specific uh, uh, urgencies uh, in, in this sort of uh, methodology or approach that you decided to, to adopt. Yeah, th- I think the fact is that we became a sort of entertainer, but on a level which are not in we are we are not interested. We wanted to open a space where we could uh, have more inspiration, and so just to be in an in 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 uh, entertainer is not really um, uh, really um, stimulating. So this was one reason. But the second reason was also that we. Um, uh, to 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 organize all these events takes you a lot of energy, and so it takes you more energy than the program itself. So also this is a a big part of this problem because, as I told, as the begin in the, in the beginning, Lungomare for us is free time, so it's not a work. We work in Lungomare, but uh, we we have o- our own studio where we really work. So really work for money. This is really something we made with with passion. I know what you will <laughs> want to say, but it's uh, we are completely <coughs> precarious. We we don't take money from Lungomare as from the beginning, so it's uh, something that we do for free. I don't saying it's 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 correct, but it's uh, uh, so you you really have to. And this is also I think this um, the, the 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 topic of uh, flexibility and uh, to be c- small and also very um, able to change your identity. This is very interesting also for for uh, for me because I can change also the the direction of the the place we are running and so I can change the the interests uh, I want to cover um yeah I don't know if it's an answer indeed this change uh, the the amount of people that uh, was following following you I mean, your audience, how did it change? It was easier to make the entertain, of course. But um, <laughs> it reduced completely the, the the audience. Maybe the success in this sense is... So this is also why th- it's difficult to uh, measure with the number of audience uh, your program because it's very easy to make a big concert and to have a lot of people, and but it's not really... Not, mm, um, 
uh, interacting with the context, but if you do uh, something which is more, um, which uh, um, ask more from the audience, is also um, it's quite uh, easy that you lose a lot of uh, audience you mm -hmm. you were talking to before. We request a different kind of engagement by a public. I mean, it gives those who run the program the possibility to go deeper into things because you have a longer. Um, time frame where you engage with a with a topic or with a question, um, but on the other hand, it's also much more demanding for those who follow the program because um, yeah, because it's a longer process and it's it's maybe um, it can have uh, entertainment parts, but um, but still, like if you want to get into, um, I mean, and that's kind of I guess one of the challenges to then still make each of the projects or each of the in the in a longer program then make things also kind of graspable for those who follow just the step um of it but i think no i mean i mean i was not involved that, that much yet when this kind of step was taking place but i think it was also yeah a lot of question of exhaustion of of yeah this yeah running from one thing to the other that also leads to a certain superficiality in, in, in engaging with uh, things and then makes it also very difficult to define this as a, b a, a practice that tries to engage really with the territory. One small experience about uh, this, I think, uh, that's the, uh, the duration and the involve involvement of people, of the audience. Uh, it changes a lot um, when you do like uh, a, a work of art, a project of art in a public interest or in a common uh, involvement. Let's say, uh, once you lose the maternity of a project and you spread, you spread this, uh, uh, this maternity. Uh, it means uh, the project is not mine because I'm an artist, but it's uh, everybody's project. Then uh, it's, um, it's easier that uh, it, it goes on. And uh, it it's, it's really can um, go out your, of your end sometimes. I mean, it happened to me, uh, but the, um, I think that's a bit, uh, um, it's risky, but that's, uh, um, in my perception, uh, a good way of really doing something into society or into social engaged project. Uh, it happened, I don't know if it's maybe long, but uh, um, we did uh, um, a project uh, creating a collective of women. It looks a bit uh, 70s, but uh, uh, it was funny. <laughs> Yeah, but it was just easy. And uh, we, uh, it, mm, why women? Because uh, uh, normally uh, we were surrounded by, uh, by by men, artists or creatives. So it was just uh, like a scanning the territory, no? just to, to know which other uh, women were working like this. So we created this collective. And uh, from uh, uh, one or two person owning the project, then everybody perceived as their own. Yes, and now it's it's going on by himself. Uh, just I think then sometimes also for this process, uh, for these projects, um, the way you word them is very important. No, them like you under realize that if you if the the if the um, the form describing the formats in a still very more traditional way sometimes <laughs> helps um, not to kind of make people feel like oh gosh this is something very exhausting I don't want to engage with it but um, if it still remains a research exhibition <laughs> but there is exhibition so you think like okay there's maybe something I can look at and so forth then it's easier than if you just call it making research visible no <laughs> And I think, I mean, that's also a learning process of, of understanding how, m how important language is when you talk about what you're doing and uh, how that can be an ex inclusive or exclusive moment, I think. I, I just wanted to give some theoretical uh, sort of inputs um, about what you were saying. 
uh, because this concept of trying to adapt and accelerate and change constantly has been theorized a lot by Pascal Guillen, which is um, a sociologist from Belgium, head of department of this PhD school called Art in Society. And he's speaking about three different phenomena, which are the acceleration, the adaptation, and the anticipation. So basically, not only you have to adapt to what are the conditions, which, which is at the moment that we are living in an era called, for Pascal, the surf flat land. So it's, it's a land which is flat and is uh, very wet, and we are surfers, and we are going psh, psh, like the network, where the network is going, we are moving and connecting. And this is the adaptation thing. Then the, uh, there is the, accel uh, the um, anticipation, which is that I have to try to imagine before the Lugo Mare does what I can do in contemporary art. So I will arrive at that point before the them which is a sort of competition, basically. It's a very neoliberalist system. And then after I get the idea before than them, I have to accelerate in order to do the idea in a very short time because also the money will not be enough for a longer period. So basically, it's a very stressful sort of condition <laughs> in which people are getting crazy and try to, to overproduce, as Isaiah was saying in the morning, constantly and to offer this, not to a very big public, but actually to an elite, which is the art people itself. So this is the first thing. And the second thing was about the social impact, because I think it's very interesting. There is um, a lecturer. Uh, she's originally from Italy, but she's working for the University of Birmingham in England. Uh, she's called Paola Merli. And she's speaking a lot about the impossibility of evaluation for social impact, of art social impact. Um, she's giving an example, like the Glasgow uh, effect. Uh, and how sometimes there is a vision about how to create a city that can really host art in a certain way and can create a potential for artistic communities or things like that. The Glasgow miracle, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, the, the point is that in reality there is no such a thing like a scientific way to really evaluate the social impact of art. So we can, we can speak about numbers and visitors, but that is not a social impact. And even if you have one person that maybe can engage with the project, it's very difficult to really understand, I mean, for how, how far your message got to the person, who, how this person reacted to a set of conditions that were already in place, and what you did simply gave one unit of, you know, like one input to this person. I just, sorry, just wanted to say... <laughs> in that sense, uh, in evaluating the social impact, there was a research project that was done in London through, it's called Common Matters, the, the edition, well, the, the document, it's online, and I don't remember now, I'm a bit out. Eh? Common, Common Matters. Common Matters. Yeah. Collaborative. Yeah. Yeah, on how you can evaluate art which tries to have a social impact, so proposing different kind of evaluation systems that are not related to visitors and numbers. And it's quite interesting, our research, it's online. I have one copy in like a PDF, yeah, so if you want to have a look at it, I, I can pass it by to later tomorrow. But it re it's really interesting because it, it deals with this idea that the problem is that very often everything is counted on numbers and numbers of visitors, and uh, that doesn't give a real image of what culture, how can it can affect, and it's really difficult to measure how it can affect, but they propose a number of things that you can look at. So it's an interesting starting point. Yeah, because, I mean, I come back to, <laughs> to funding schemes making these requests of success being measurable and very clear, no? Like audience groups you're targeting, um, what can be the surplus value for some certain people, blah, 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 blah. I mean, and that's all very dangerous <laughs> terms to relate to. So... Si, we have, a <laughs> we have another hour, no. Fare poi il gas house direttamente. Saltiamo... Comments. Okay. I don't know how everybody's energy is. Okay, it's okay. Guardiamo lo schema? Yeah. Okay, so coming to this famous scheme we were talking about <laughs> since we started at three, what we, we, what we would try to do, um, 
what we try to do in, in thinking about the practice of of Lungomare, but also kind of trying to think about practices that try to both on a inst I mean both from the perspective of, of an institution but also of an artist I guess um, um, what how you can shape a, sus a sustainable practice that takes into in consideration um, a set of, of parameters and we kind of thought for us that um, context was kind of the key term that was at the center from which then the practice would um, kind of develop and, the f um, and context in the sense of in a very broad sense in kind of the, the m all the m elements that um, conditions and elements and knowledges that kind of shape shape a practice and um, we made the translation yesterday in the night, so the political and social, I think it's very comprehensible, but <laughs> it's not, every, everything, not is everything is translated. Um, and we were discussing long, uh, at length like how, how um, the element local and global should be represented in such a, such a scheme, if this would be something that is actually outside, I mean, kind of circulating around everything, or if it was something that was kind of in the middle and starting from the middle, and some, somehow we decided then to place it in the middle, but put local and global next to each other, um, um, because we think that, that it is not interesting to look at local questions and just on a local level and at the same time it's important to relate global questions to a local context um, and that this is something actually that is totally intertwined which maybe relates to what you were saying like there is no local there is no global because we are all like there is no we're all deterritorialized and that kind of all floating on a, on, on 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 different i mean on a plane um uh, and the next um of course, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and then the other question we were discussing at length is how theory would relate to um, to the question of context, if this was something that was embracing everything, um, and was if something... Is central point uh, if it is a central point, or if it is something that... Um, yeah, that is like a second context you carry with you, but that inter that intervenes with um, all different aspects, and um, we decided to place it in this way that it is something that is there constantly, um, but it is maybe like more present or less present depending on 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 the project. And I mean, to be get a bit more concrete, um, we. Yeah, we, we, we define this these kind of keywords, which is um one is the um, one is time, um uh which is an important factor I think for the development of uh, of projects as it has kind of come up now more and more. Um the question of which is also again related back to a question of engagement and, and investment of time. You you relate to something in the process you want to start or or sometimes also just a very small thing can kind of trigger um an an, Im an important uh, impact um then there was the question of which is very present in our case is the question of the geographical position um you you are situated in um because that um not only um has an impact on um, what you're engaging with, but also the way you want to kind of work on these topics, because um, um, there is no use of making a conference series in Bolzano, inviting Ranciere, and I don't know who, um, um, if there is no, I mean, if it's us interested in, 
in talking um, to these high-profile um, theoreticians, but there's actually very little interest, which does not say that you have to challenge a local public at the margins, but you have to find other keys, I guess, to um, ad uh, address this. Or you can do this, but then you have to do a half a year long reading group before to <laughs> before you start the, um, um, something like this. So this stays, I mean, and I think very much that um, you maybe at the margins, it's much more the question of filling in a niche. I mean, um, looking at the institutional landscape and filling in a niche, something elected that is there more than in a center maybe or in a city as like London, you can follow much more your own interest and follow your discourse and, and, and there will be people always be interested in that. But at the margin, you have to much more create a discourse and, 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 and kind of make people engage with it. Then, of course, there is uh, the political and social context uh, um, for institutions and projects, which then again goes out into um, um, different fields again. I mean, all these things, of course, are totally interrelated to each other. It's not distinct fields that we put next to each other. Um, um, and the question of collaborations and network have, and public, of course, have been very important for, for Lungomaga, and I think that relates back again to the question of the margin that you need in order to kind of get the inspiration and, and, and exchange and so forth. You have to collaborate much more because you need this outside-inside kind of uh, exchange and um, also the uh, in order to give yourself a voice, it's also much easier if you kind of collaborate with, I mean, create a network with other similar uh, institutions um, to empower yourself. I mean, and we see that some examples have failed, but others, uh, like ADA, but I mean, there's other more informal networks maybe that actually work pretty well. And then, I mean, this has been come up a lot today, also the question of the public. Um, and I don't think that... Um, that uh, like a space like Lungomare um, can has the responsibility really to build up a public that kind of is something growing because I think each project is very specific and um, there will always just be a smaller group of people following the projects but then through the project there's always an activation of a new group of people and some of them might stay on and others are just interested in a very peculiar question but don't stay on. Um, well, then, of course, in, in Alto Adige and Bolzano, the question of the tradition and the contemporary contemporaneity is a, is a big of attention, and it's also attention on a, on a cultural political level because it's always much more dangerous to position yourself in the contemporaneity rather than sticking to the tradition. And uh, um, this is, I think, something that has been faced a lot uh, in the last years in Bolzano because there have been some back... I mean, there has been some scandals going on, which I'm not going to go into now because that, that's too much, but there has been a lot of propaganda against art, so to say, um, um, and which has given a lot of arguments for the tradition to kind of be reinforced. And then, I mean, this is something we have been touching today a lot, was the question of, of the mo forms of, of um, I mean, the economical factors that uh, are present in a context or that shape a context. And I think the question of institutionalized um, finance, I mean, fin funding streams or funding system against um, a more, um, I mean, alternative ways of financing is something that um, cannot, I mean, does not always have to be um, a negative aspect, I'd say. I mean, we have, we will talk about one project where we kind of also try to, to find ways of making projects sustainable. And I think that's also one of the topics for the Laboratorio de Basso, not to think about ways of making culture also in, in, in this very kind of precarious moment. Um, and, that th um, and I think, I mean, we tried it this last summer mm -hmm. and, um, and it was an experiment which partly succeeded. Do you think you can uh, change something of this? Uh, can you really you agree with it, uh, or you think, it, for example, the question of the theoretical part? You agree with it that uh, something that could be in different places? 
do you agree with, with this uh, organization of uh, content or if you think of uh, about projects you made or can you also recognize some uh, bounds maybe we can maybe also to abstract yeah uh, we can <laughs> also <laughs> you're not missing anything Okay, so maybe yeah, we can. Uh, story about one of the aspects about uh, theory, no? Yeah. The theoretical theory. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think the question of theory. Um, yeah, the, it, yeah. That that could be a session in itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, No, what what Anna is referring about is related to a project that we were running now is almost two years ago uh, that was about institutional critique and was about the... Um, it started because of the opening of a Center for Contemporary Art here in Bari and somehow it was related also to different urgencies around Europe, different institutions that were wondering what is exactly the museum right now? What does the institution mean? So we started a collaborative project with Van Haber Museum in Eindhoven, um, Labyrinth Gallery in, in Poland, and Mostyn Gallery in Wales. Uh, the question was basically all about the museum. What can be the museum for the, fu for the future? What is an institution? And there were, like, the, the, the basic part of the project was, that was called Giant Step was to organize symposium around Europe and discuss this topic. So we thought that, okay, the best way for us to deal with this question in Bari is to start with a reading group, uh, to start to pose the question to the local practitioners and then arrive step by step to the final symposium, which is during summertime. And what actually happened, and that was absolutely our mistake, a total failure, was that we started potentially with the wrong text, which was Brian Holmes, the first reading group in English and very complex text, very intense. <coughs> and I think that day by day, the local practitioner were like, not just not interested, like, come dici disanimato, demotivated, yeah? Discouraged, yeah, to, to deal with this idea of having the reading group and plus to, to try to discuss this topic. So we arrived to June with nobody interested <laughs> in, in carrying on the project together with us. Um, and somehow we, we thought about um, a plan B, which was, okay, how we try to share this with people from all over the world and maybe to integrate more and more researchers. But also in that case, I think that, as you were saying before, we used the wrong terminology because we started to speak about the idea of creating dossier, but then for people was not very uh, straightforward uh, the definition of what is a dossier, what you are really expecting from us. So somehow it was a, a project whose aim, I think, was fitting the context perfectly, is still a big question. We will, we will talk about this a lot and you will see what's going on in Bari. But we, I think that we choose the worst attitude and possibly approach ever to respond to this urgency. But, uh, I guess it's also about creating a, <laughs> a theoretical framework or kind of, or establishing a discourse is also that is something that really takes a lot of time, no? Yeah. And that's something that, um, yeah, you build up really in, yeah, in, in in a long process, and I guess the challenge in 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 in, in circumstances where maybe it's not so present um, is to to kind of yeah, kind of play a bit more with it, like be not so. I mean, don't frame it as theory, but like um, like embed it in your practice, but don't don't um, emphasize it. Yeah. Um, I think. Also looking for the kind of discourse that responds to what you, where you are, because I think very often you have this context in which suddenly you get text from someone who's writing from a completely different geographical social point that doesn't relate to the people who are reading it, and we we have a like a general schema of 
of uh, of theory that is kind of internationally recognized, but it doesn't mean that it's applicable to every single place. And I think that's a very common mistake to just think that everything, I mean, that something that is super interesting in London will be super interesting in 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 in, in Bolzano or in Bilbao or, or in Mari. It's like maybe the the preoccupations that they have is different, and sometimes it's really different difficult to know which these worries are, which interests. I mean, sometimes it's really difficult to tackle what the what people are interested in talking about, and then finding it, and and I think including it into the practice is often much better, but it's really difficult to do. Yeah. It's really difficult to find a way. So it's really not not easy. He's a Christian. He can also create alienation. Yeah. Counterproductive. <laughs> is there any more comments on this? Just very shortly, um, talking about context uh, involves also kind of responsibility about the context. So I think a very important point in every project context related is how you communicate what you have done to the context. That somehow sometimes is part of the project, but in a completely unconscious way. So uh, let's say... If you try to, okay, I, st I, I try with uh, uh, my experience, but we made something like a, for a residency program and um, we were trying to um, point the attention of people about the fact that uh, the area of the market in Turin is used for economic transi transitions, let's say, and uh, of course the very little ones, but also the big ones like bank foundations are investing there. And uh, so we try to uh, bring back in the square uh, the relevance of uh, dialogue and political discussion. And we try to involve the public of people and of citizens passing by, but of course it's not a good methodology. I mean, it's something that you should structure. So it's important to give this relevance to how to structuring this kind of relation and output of your project to the context. Well, there's a yeah, I think this question is both for Vessel and Lungomare. How do you, at the one hand, listen to the certain locality you work with and um, maybe give them something that they expect of you and at the other hand challenge them and give them something that they might not expect of you but that you maybe think they would need or offer them something else? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's uh, there most of the, I think uh, most of well it's very difficult because of course I think there is always a personal urgency involved in 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 what y what you're doing um but this person and this personal urgency comes from something you perceive in this context no um so yeah I, well I couldn't say say what is more but I think a lot of the time it is is something that you're interested in and then you kind of try to translate it into a question that more people can 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 re relate to but maybe I don't know maybe you don't agree <laughs> <laughs> No in quanto in quanto la domanda in quanto lo faccio come lungo reagisce una domanda You are, you are related to a context, of course you react to something from the context, so it is something that, there's a question that is there, so you, you kept it, and so you, you talk to uh, the audience is um, in, indirectly or directly, in a way, interested in it. Sometimes you also fail, maybe you, 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 you take the, the, the wrong um, uh, issue of the, uh, of the moment, but 
I think if, if you are related to a context, it's very near. The public and the, the needs you are. something i think that we have for sure at least two different approaches on one side as you said we are trying to respond and on the other side we are trying to bring something which is not just a response but maybe can be like i don't know an input which is not present here or which we think is not present here and to start a, conversa a conversation from there so on one hand we we dedicate lots of time in observation which in our case is highly complicated because we are not here because the conditions are not permitting us to be here. I mean, for us, it's even difficult to obtain a location, a proper location. And the majority of us, in order to survive, since we are not having our living through vessel, we are doing other things out of body, and then coming here for short-term projects and trying to develop something, which is highly controversial and very difficult. But for that, we are, let's say that we are dedicating lots of time on close reading of some policies and things which are generally not just about Puglia, but the, the, let's say the bigger region in which Puglia is part of, which is the Mediterranean. Then we are doing a, a process of observation about the city, not just made by vessel team, but also by people we are inviting from, from external places like artists and other practitioners like Nicoletta, for instance, that are spending a, like a month over a year and really trying to bring up questions or urgencies that they could spot in the region. And then on the other side, since the team is quite heterogeneous because we are four people, for the four of us are in PhD right now, and one is devoted to institutional critique, another one is more about the idea of performance in art, in my case is more about policies and curatorial studies, and for Anna it's more about social engaged practices and curatorial practice. So we are trying to mingle these sort of interests together and try to somehow give something to the territory, which of course can fit, not that, okay, all of a sudden now we want to do a project that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, the point is that I don't think that the problem is what we are trying to use as a content, but the problem for us was the approach. And the approach, as Lisa said, is also a lack of experience. I mean, Vessel started two years and a half ago, and we are still working on tools a lot. And we have so many things to learn. So we are also learning by failures. And the, ap the approach we use for the reading groups, it was a big failure. So I just said that. And uh, I wouldn't, uh, just to be absolutely clear, it was not because the artists were not understanding, it was because we made a mistake about presenting something that was not engaging enough to try to start a discussion. So, sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, public speak, who? <laughs> um, I don't know how we round up the thing. It's a bit because we wanted to present you also the project of um, Nungomare Gastas of this, uh, the last summer, which was, um, after 10 years, uh, a way to, to try to uh, focus on different kind of topics um, linked to, the, to a non-profit space like we are. For example, on the economic part. Huh? Maybe we are rebellious. We, we go on and then... <laughs> 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 Until they don't stop us, we don't. Um, so, yeah, the Lungomare Gastas project. Um, well, this year, Lungomare turned 10 years old. And uh, the question was uh, how to face this anniversary. And because it was very clear that it, um, yeah, there shouldn't be like a big retrospective or very auto-referential like um, um, project 
reviewing the last 10 years, but um, there was the, the aim was to create something that would kind of try to show in a condensed way um, the... Um, Exemplify somehow the practice of Lungomare in 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 one one thing in one in one event, and uh, Lungomare has always maybe as you have also seen like from the projects uh, Daniele talked on earlier on has always been also very importantly a, a place of encounter. So yes, uh, Fil Filippo, no. Filippo, no Federico, no, sorry. It, the, I think for Lungomare it has been important to have this physical space. Um, where people would go to and could relate to and could um, kind of engage in a glass of wine after an opening and, and this kind No, no, because you were asking and I said like this, we're going to answer it later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think for Lungomare it has been. I mean, this project showed how important it has been to reactivate more vividly um, um, the, the the location as such. So what we um, thought to do was to set up a temporary guest house a, at a restaurant for a month, um, which would have a, a program running from. I mean, it would be open from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, in the evenings and on Sunday for brunch, and they would have uh, every day a program running through through their month through the month and um, um, which would have very different um, formats that would kind of relate to many of the topics that have been present in Lungomagas uh, program, but which would also have the moments to reflect upon its own um, their own work and their own own state of things, so to say. And in order to do this, we invited two accomplices, which was uh, um, Filippa Ramos, who's a curator and critic uh, based uh, between Milan and London. She's from Portugal, who developed uh, a series of uh, a cinema program and uh, and a series. Um, of conversations and and Luigi Coppola, who is actually from from yeah. this region, uh, who um, developed um, a perf series of performances uh, and uh, and also set up a sort of a small residency program. But I, I will be going on with that later. So we started. Actually, the first thing though we were thinking of was the space, the structure. <coughs> so we started a conversation um, with. Um, yeah, well, it Construct Lab, and uh, well, there was also some people from Exist involved, um, which is a French-German international collective of, of architects who work a lot on these um, temporary um, um, spaces, and um, they we developed together this this structure. Sancho cannot take. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we we started the uh, um, yeah uh, the dialogue with with them and and um, and developed together this idea of since I mean Lungomare is called Lungomare but there is no mare. <laughs> um, um, they came up with the idea of of or they were like inspired by the idea of the Théâtre du Mer. So this idea of of developing a, a, a oh, an arena that would look not onto the sea but onto the valley and to the city because Lungomare is a bit outside of the city, and um, so they developed this structure which was on the downside there was the um, kitchen and bar and then the upper side there was uh, as you can see in the right part down there was um, the um, cinema screen and, and the space for for performances and and and, uh, and lectures and so forth. Um, this was all built, I mean, it was developed together and it was all built together with people, students and architects and, and uh, carpenters uh, from Bolzano together with uh, people working with Construct Lab in a, in a week. Um, 
They set up uh, this structure for a month, which has been dismantled after the month. And um, exactly, you can go on. And next to the, um, the structure at Lungomara, it was very important also to have a presence in a public space, since this has been so important um, yeah, over the last 10 years uh, to, to interact also there. So, um, Construct Club developed three. Um, and yeah, it was um, the project Luigi Coppola develop, developed was also meant to take place in the public space. So they developed um, three structures uh, that uh, would be placed for the duration of the month in the in the public space. And it was really interesting to see like how they actually were. I mean, they were also conceived in a way to kind of maybe fill in a gap um, or like. Uh, allowed to inhabit the public space in a different way, especially in the, in this case, it was, um, yeah, it gave the, they were immediately kind of activated and, and used and so forth. Then also the seating and the tables for the Lungomara Gasthaus were developed um, together with a um, design researcher of the University of Bolzano. And they were realized um, in a workshop, yeah, in a workshop. And all the people who participated in the workshop could then kind of um, take one chair with them after the month, uh, after, the month. after the project was over, so they could uh, take it with them. So this was the opening of uh, of uh, Lungomara project. This was last uh, yeah last June, and um, it was very interesting to see how how. How far? I mean, uh, we were also we were surprised at how this kind of space that has a, had a very, of course, the social factor was very, very um, present, would activate a completely new public um, in Bolzano. So people would, all kind of different people would come um, to visit Lungomare that hadn't never ever been there before because they were. I mean, we c we received also a lot of of, of presence in the media, but. Um, it managed through this idea of the guest house, and this was also a bit the, the idea to kind of play this trick and, 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 and get people there because they wanted to, to eat and drink, but then also to actually get involved in, in, in the program. Um, it went even so far that we one, one evening we had this group of 20-year-old <laughs> boys celebrating their birthday there, and... Um, all in the sudden, I mean, they were got really drunk, and then they started to sing like nationalistic songs. And I was like, "Excuse me, this is maybe not the right place to do this kind of thing." And they were saying like, "Well, this is our culture." So I mean, it was an interesting kind of um, discussion. We 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 got involved, and we realized also what it means to open up totally. Um, that you also need to face. I mean, that it's really nice to get, have like a really broad public, but then you start to face a whole set of other problems and questions, which you're not aware of before when you do your nice small projects with a couple of people. This was a performance Marti Migliora did for the opening. She she developed, yeah, we will see later, she developed the whole plates and bowls for the uh, Lungomare Gasthaus, which were based on... The, ti the, title was, uh, the title was Con la cultura non si mangia, which is uh, an expression like you don't, I mean, culture doesn't feed you, basically, which was a sentence the cultural minister at the time said to argue for the cuts of uh, the cultural budgets. And then starting from that, she kind of researched a whole set of question, uh, sentences that were, that there were printed on these handmade plates and bolts through which she wanted also to activate the, the visitors coming there to just have food and, and engage in a sort of a discussion um, um, stemming from them. A, a small cut, but also interesting that the, the economical part, because we're all the all the stuff is so oh. until now, the, the structure was um, restructured for another um, installation in the public space of the of the city of Bolzano. The the, the chairs were sold uh, after the the event, and for example, these these cups were, um, were um, produced, and then we uh, sold them also after the the event. And this was also the the way we were able to to realize this stuff because otherwise we don't have the the, um, the the support. We could sustain the production costs. Yeah, and I think something that was really important for the for the project was to kind of try to treat all levels and all all 
parts of the project on us on the same level. Um, so nothing was kind of the kitchen was not more important of the cinema program, but it was also not at the service of of the exhibition or so, and um, that made it in a communication a bit complicated. And for some people, our booklet was not really um, understandable, understandable <laughs> because they thought it was too too cryptic. Um, yeah, but also for the kitchen, we made a big research about uh, um, particular uh, projects about food, about uh, produ production of food. So we uh, made a big research around the valleys, and we. We made uh, deals with the with the uh, with the um, producers, the producers, yeah. and uh, we we, uh, we we made we cooked the food with uh, very uh, good quality of food because of these agreements and because of this research. Um, so we decided not to make um, um, a retrospective, but to kind of try to engage with the archive or the history of Lungomare in a more complex way, which was maybe also a bit, for some people, too, too which was challenging. Um, and um, there was one project, can you go on to that? Uh, there was... Um, Stefano Bernardi, did a local artist, did a project um, uh, working on the um, sound archive of Lungomare. So he was taking all the, he was taking snippets out of the sound archive of, of Lungomare and was making ten vinyls. On each of these vinyls, he kind of remixed these um, these phrases, which were kind of yeah taken out of the most important um, um, project of Lungomare and um, and. And an artist, another local artist, artist Heinz Mother, um, created the, the covers of the of the, these LPs for it. And then you could basically go there and remix these projects and the history of Lung Lungomare, which was when this kind of activation, we also underestimated how much guidance it would need for people to actually really engage with it. With it, but it, for us it was really important that this inner space would also be in transformation. So, for example, the performances Luigi Coppola did, um, there was a video was made of it, and this kind of entered the space after the video was was done. And then there was one. Well, just, uh, just for uh, Hello, Stefano, yeah. it's interesting to to make uh, this this uh, small pieces of of of, of the history of Lungomare were really mixed like. Uh, in a, in, a, in a new work, so the idea was what we did until now is a, is a, is our, our st st um, ground uh, stones for what we develop in the future. So. And um, one ongoing project, which was also kind of growing in the exhibition space, was this idea of the Pensiero del Giorno, uh, with the thought of the day. So we wanted each day of the guest house to end with with a thought which could be a written thought, which could be a, a picture, which could be a drawing. And we invited different participants to, I mean, to, yeah, to, to contribute with this um, thought. And it is a really interesting collection that uh, they grew, grew out of it. Actually, our project assistant made the nicest one. She scanned that the, f the last day of, of the, of the, of the project of the guest house, she scanned her Im email inbox for words that have been used and kind of listed the frequency of them. And that was really interesting um, to see, like talking about terminology, <laughs> what, you, what you use uh, um, um, in the process of the making of such a project. So this is the project um, that um, Luigi Coppola developed. And I think it's a bit difficult to concentrate here because also I think this is people who don't want to come here. Time to close. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Shall we? I don't know. We can in continue informally um, over dinner or now or whatever. If you have to go out here, whatever you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for this kind of strange end now, but um, <laughs> we thought to have more time. So we are sorry, but we didn't know about this. There is the program by someone else, which is not us. Keep your space. Keep your space.
Yeah. So the idea, the idea is that uh, from now on till uh, I think that we can we can start to go up around eight, right? Okay, so we can meet around eight at the hotel, and we are going for a restaurant which is called Brasserie Visconti. We can also send you the email with the address. Andrea will take care of that. Uh, in case we will meet at the at eight at the hall, and tomorrow morning we are not in this place. We are actually having. The, the workshop in another location. Um, so anyway, you will get the updates and the program, everything by email. We would like, <laughs> I don't know if I know all the information, but no, sorry. For you? No, okay. But OK, OK. Um, so we want to thank everybody for the participation and above all Arti to make this possible for us. Uh, it will, it's, I mean, for right now, I can close the day for Laboratory Dal Basso. Sorry? It's better you say because I cannot. <laughs> no, we, we will be back with the uh, Laboratory Dal Basso on uh, Thursday, 21st. So we have a uh, three days break uh, uh, to enjoy the generative practice workshop. So thank you so much. And I'm really, really sorry for this. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we should have had more time to ask questions. So thank you.